I used to live in this house in Ole, Pennsylvania. Ole, Pennsylvania is this rural town with more cornfields and farms and malls. One of the local spots was this dairy farm where we'd suck up going to the petting zoo to get our hands on these giant jawbreakers. I feel like there's some kind of irony in taking a bunch of llama spit just so we can slobber all over a piece of candy. But I was the new kid and I became part of the pack by this initiation. The neighborhoods were surprisingly developed considering the displacement from literally everything else, but that meant all us kids were pretty close. If Llama Spit was the initiation, then the cemetery at the top of the neighborhood was what separated the boys from the men. No, seriously, the grass grew so tall up there that us boys would get lost in the grass while all the men stood well above it. There was this path that we could ride all our bikes on which would probably look like little kids' heads bobbing up and down like dogs when they hop through snow because they're excited. Only this is an excitement. It's fear, because the challenge was to race through the maze-like path and not be the last one out. I don't think it caused any psychological damage, but it definitely led to an active imagination amongst everyone in a hierarchy of who was bravest. The braver you were, the more others would listen to whatever you said. So it's Halloween season, right? And I'm not the bravest. I suppose I could have bulldozed my way through the tall grass and not end up last out of there, but when the bigger kid tells you there are ghosts in the grass, you don't go taking chances you can't survive. I mean, what the heck am I going to do? A nine-year-old confronted by a ghost? Nothing. I had no plan. Anyway, so my friend and I are hanging out in my basement watching TV, and he sees one of these little storage doors we had, probably to access the innards of the house, right? No. That was where Chucky was. Who's Chucky? Man, I never saw Child's Play. He could have told me Chucky was one of the ghosts in the cemetery, and I would have believed him. But I found out he's an evil doll, about the size of a small child. Who kills you? That's it. No other details. The damage was done. Here I am thinking Chucky's in my house, hiding in the walls or something. But you know, I'm trying to be brave. Tough it out. There's no proof. Later on, I'm sitting there minding my own business and that little service door creaks open. I had a cat at the time, but how would she have gotten inside the walls? It doesn't make sense. What does make sense is freaking Chucky. That's it. I'm gonna die. I couldn't fight a ghost. What am I gonna do with an evil doll who apparently just never actually dies? I'm too scared to watch any of the movies to even try and figure out how to kill him because that's where I've assured myself this is gonna come down to. As a nine year old, I've already resolved that at some point in my life, I'll come face to face with an evil killer doll. But when? I'll just be on high alert all the time, which seems at least easy enough to do during the day. But what about at night? Well, there's night lights and TVs and I can scream for my parents pretty loudly if really need be. Nah, the real place where I knew I'd be screwed was in the shower. My first thought was to maybe shower with clothes on. You know, that way I'm not entirely naked and afraid. Just like a bathing suit or something. The idea of dying naked has a symmetry to being born, but there's no way in hell my friends are going to hear about the kid who couldn't make it out of tall grass being even more vulnerable. The way I'm thinking is that if Chucky has run around inside the walls of my house, if there are pipes in the way, then there's no way he can come out of the wall. So not only am I convincing myself this is gonna happen, I've sold myself on the idea that an evil child who can phase through walls is gonna draw the line at pipes. And also, pipes are everywhere. But as a nine-year-old planning a date with a fictitious doll, I've somehow convinced myself that there are no pipes on the back wall of the shower. I can't have my back turned on that wall for a second, cause that's the same second he's gonna get me. But I've gotta wash my face. I can't put my face under the water, that's too risky. So that's why I started taking showers with my back to the water. I couldn't step too far into the water either. So my eyes would always be open, watching that back wall. Which means when it came time to wash my face, I'd literally reach behind me, grab little handfuls of water and try and splash them on my face fast enough to one, manage to get all the water on my face. If I didn't, I'd be in there for longer and expose myself more. And two, making sure I'm fast enough to not give Chucky a chance. Like that's gonna be it. Like Chucky's gonna phase through that back wall the millisecond I blink with that splash of water. See me staring back at him and he's just gonna say, oh, well, you caught me, and turn around and walk away? No, he's gonna kill me. I'm not gonna be able to stop that. Or am I? See, because this is what I'm thinking. Chucky's just one evil thing. He can't be everywhere doing evil things. If he's in my house, then he can't be in another person's house. So I'd be like, hey, Chucky, what if you could be here and there? What if you could scare twice as many kids? I can't imagine anything that's pure evil telling themselves that double the horror isn't a good idea. Like, what are you cutting back on being evil? What horror creature goes on a diet? No way, you can't resist. So I tell him, what if there were two of you? 
two chuckies? I mean, that's just more efficient and more terrifying. He'd have no choice but to give me the same powers he has. And that's when I'd kill him! Which I guess that would mean that I'd end up being Chucky. Like a good Chucky haunting people. But I'd wait till after you get out of the shower. <laughs>